continue record. Okay, that's a weird message. If I'm recording, why am I continuing recording? I wasn't recording. Hey. See, I, I get easily confused. Um, oh. So the, the idea is to use steps, right? Um, if we call them dealerships and they're mm -hmm. not franchises, we're not, you know, hurdled with, you know, all the regulations. But if oh. the, if the, dealership agreement and the franchise agreement are very sim similar, then it's easy to go from one contract to another when we're mm. ready for it. Right? right. But, you know, when we're ready for it, I want the dealership fees to be very close to the franchise fees. And then it's going to be an easy transition. And when these people are educated from day one, this is the progression and they understand it, then you know we're ready for the next phase. They are already trained and they're ready on board to do that, right? So, the biggest part is you know creating the landing pages so we get dominance on Google, but also creating the truck wrap so they're all over North America and they're already creating the brand awareness, right? Right. So the the truck wraps are crucial. So we are seen as a trusted part of every community we're trying to develop. Right. Okay. So that's that's the model. Um and I want someone I own shares in 19 different companies, so I want somebody to to take on the role of you know mm -hmm. um of day-to-day -day operations in it. Definitely. Yeah. I want to be involved in the design of the business blueprint, creating all the systems and say, here it is, you know, well, it's gonna help you find staff, you mm -hmm. know, go ahead and and uh, do it. So that's that's the plan. And it sounds like you, you are already on board with that. Definitely. Yeah. Mike, I could just quick question about the whole franchising. Would that, are you like, are you saying that comes at the very beginning or that's all that's after, you know, we build the business. No, we build the business. I would like to see the business at, let's say, right. you know, 3 million or 5 million, mm -hmm. because you, you got to have the proven concept. If you're going right. to ask, you know, for a major investment from people, we got to have all the systems in place, right. you know, how they can get trucks, how they can get equipment, how they can hire employees, you know, how many leads are coming from their, uh, from their part of the website and all those things. We got to have those systems in place. And once we train them and we have a system to train all their employees, we got to deliver like clockwork. You know, we want video testimonials, not text testimonials so there has to be a system in there to make the client comfortable because as soon as you put a, a camera in their face oh tell us how great we did you know that's going to be a horrible testimonial and you can't use that right, right. so there has to be systems uh, mm -hmm. in place where it sounds natural that the client is doing this on their own so like i said we've been doing this for 40 years so we have a pretty good idea what the problems are going to be and we want to solve these problems before we create them and we always create our own problems so right so that all sounds good what do you think would be the startup cost of a business like this and how would that how would we go about that of uh, 100 to 200 thousand dollars um but it can certainly be done with less, we can certainly, um, I had a, a Zoom meeting with investors this morning. I am looking for investments. I'm not sure that I want to go investments because now we were give, giving up equity for, forever or at least for a period of time. Um, you know, I'd probably like for us to finance this ourselves if you have any capital. Um, and it also depends on on the share split, right? Um, obviously, if you're operating the business full time, obviously you're going to get a salary. Uh, I don't want to get a, a draw a salary until we're we're at least north of three million dollars, um, because I want to invest everything back into the business uh, to make sure it's successful. The first time I franchised, we literally worked night and day for the first 10 franchises to make sure they were successful. We did everything for them, you know, everything, right? And that's what I see again, you know, that worked, 
Um, so we got to make sure that the first 10 uh, franchises are ultra successful because we're going to use the first 10 to sell the next 100. Right. All right. So they have to be. And we're going to hire VAs. We're going to hire employees. We're going to hire salespeople. We're going to hire content creators. We're going to hire a lot of different people to make sure they are successful. Um, because we're going to benefit from it. Right. Now, the only concern that I have when when I uh, speak about this, uh, about finding partnerships, and by the way, my first partner cost me $7 million. So I'm, you know, I'm concerned about that. So we have to have a solid partnership agreement with uh, with a shotgun clause, and we have to practice and test a relationship. And we got to invent scenarios. If this happened, what do we do? If this happens, what do we do? If this happens, what do we do? Right. So we got to have pre-planned emergency strategies, because if you don't have pre-planned, then you you know you're just reacting, and I don't believe in reacting. Okay, right. we design business blueprints for a reason to anticipate every future problem. Okay, we even anticipated uh, COVID, right, before it happened. Because if you look at uh, uh, Bill Gates, he was talking about COVID in 2016, right? So there's nothing left to chance, right? Okay, so. Uh, one of the concerns that I would have is I understand that you need to make an income and I understand this would take a while to get off the ground before we develop um, real uh, develop any type of revenue where you can sustain yourself. Mm -hmm. But there's got to be, you know, um, uh, a strategy where you focus on this 100 percent. I understand, right. you know, for the next 12 months or whatever the, that time period is, you got to have income to pay your bills. But eventually when, you know, when you can uh, meet your salary or even double your salary, you jump over full time. And this is 100% of your focus. That That isn't really my concern. I'm fine. Like, I, I think I have the focus capacity to do this and also... I'm not worried about making like I have other streams of income that I can suffice myself with until, you know, it gets off the ground. I would say just the startup capital, like I don't have, you know, 100, 200 K to put into this. So the startup capital is what is only raising a question mark in my brain right now. All right. Okay. Um, and it's not only just startup capital, even though you're not operating, um, or you could operate your own painting business because that could be the startup capital. That could be where the 200,000 comes from, right? Because if you operate a, a physical painting business with painting crews and the general manager and the you know, sales team, right? Mm -hmm. That could be the generation of uh, where you produce the 200,000 to go back into the franchise system, the overall company. Right. So you could have your own business that you operate and you own that 100 percent. But we are also partners in the overall uh, franchise concept. Mm -hmm. OK, so mm -hmm. um, do you have interest in operating a painting business yourself? I would. Yeah, I think like if you're saying we're still partners on some level, I'd like that just because I, I know I will need some guidance at some point. Um. But when you say that, like, wouldn't that painting business, even if I am operating it, wouldn't that also still have some kind of startup cost? Yeah, but um, no, actually, no, very little. I consider, you know, 10,000 or 50,000, you know, <laughs> you know, not, not, not significant. Let's put it that right. way. When you consider starting a business, 50,000 is, uh, is, extremely small amount um but we can we can certainly start businesses with ten thousand dollars with a lot of sweat equity right okay um and you know i i i feel that most people can raise ten thousand uh or more from their credit cards even if you had to or a line of credit or or a, a second mortgage or or 
um, or even um, government grants, right? Because in Canada, um, you know, the government will, will help you and it's fairly easy to qualify for a $50,000 loan. Uh, I'm pretty sure the US government is, is the same way. Okay. How is the credit rating? Like my credit? Mm -hmm. I'd say I'm right at 700. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as long as it's above 640, I think it is, um, you should qualify for, for a loan. But then again, if you're not gung-ho about a, a loan, you know, again, there's the sweat equity. Mm -hmm. And you're hiring people who have a truck, who have a van, who have painting equipment, who have, you know, the ladders and, you know, the stuff that you need, right? right. And that's why you work with subcontractors. Or, or, or better yet, you want to hire them as employees, even though they're technically subcontractors and mm -hmm. not the, the other way around because you don't want to be stuck with, you know, paying government taxes and stuff. Right. But we're not going to talk about that. Um, so, so there, there are many opportunities, but branding and differentiation should be able to, you know, get you projects, um, pretty quickly and start generating, you know, uh, revenue within, you know, month two, month three. Right. So when you say that, how, how would you go about branding and kind of generating, um, jobs for this? Well, um, social media, um, uh, we were promoted, I would interview you on TikTok as an example. And of course, we would not talk about a partnership that you and I may have. We would right. interview you as an entrepreneur starting a business, a brand new business in Arizona. And we would go through the whole process. You know, you're thinking of launching in three months time. What do we do? Because three months time to launch a business is not very long. I usually talk about, you know, doing organic marketing one to five years before launching the business. I mean, I say that to emphasize the point. <clears throat> I don't think you need five years, but certainly 12 months would be ideal because organic marketing is a hell of a lot cheaper than paid marketing. Yeah. Right. And it, it has a deeper impact in terms of building relationships, trusted right. relationships. So we would interview you a number of times and and uh, and each time we do it, like last night, I had fifteen hundred guests in my podcast. Were you part of my podcast last night? I wasn't last night. No. OK, so we had fifteen hundred uh, people uh, and it keeps building. Right. So. Um, the idea is to have at least 10 million views on your video over the next six months or so, right? right? And that will help you build credibility, not only to attract profitable clients, but also attract great employees who say, hey, I like that idea. I right. want to be part of that, right? And they come to you. Right. Right. And they, and a lot of times they'll come to you with experience. This is how we were able to triple the workforce of a 24 year old roofing company when 24 years, it could not attract anyone. But rebranding, differentiation and people moved from different provinces and different states. OK, so that's that's what I mean about branding and differentiation. People want to be recognized. People want to be part of something greater than themselves. People want advancement opportunities. People want, yeah, they're willing to work hard for 12 months or 24 months, but they want to be to get on the fast track to management. They want to become a supervisor. They want to get into sales. They want to become a manager, right? They want to run an operation. They want to run their own business, right? Right. So when you offer those opportunities to them, they say, yeah, I will move for that opportunity. Right. You're going to help me finance my own company. Are you serious? I will move for that opportunity. Right. right. So, and that's how we attract the, uh, the best talent. Uh -huh. Does all that make sense? And I have a, a zoom call in uh, seven minutes.
Um, that all sounds good. I like. I really like the idea of the organic marketing because I know, like, I've seen that myself, like, by watching other brands and other podcasts such as yourself, that that does build a connection and definitely builds real trust that you think this person is legit rather than just seeing, you know, a, a paid ad pop up every. Yeah, now. paid, paid. You know, I I keep asking the question: Would you rather have a million dollars in a marketing account or one million followers? And people think that's a trick question. It's not a trick question because if you have a million dollars in a marketing fund, you're going to spend that and eventually that's going to get to zero. Right. But a million followers will all of a sudden get you 2 million followers, 5 million followers, 10 million followers, right? right? And I would rather have a million followers than a million dollars because a dollar a follower is actually pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but if you have great content and your, your most valuable skill is going to be, are you sitting down for this? It, it's not going to be branding and differentiation and, you know, company culture and leadership and vision and, you know, training people and, and getting pe your employees excited. It's going to be social media. Okay, you 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 have to be someone that has influence. Influence is the new currency. You're you're gonna hear me say that ten thousand times until it sinks in your brain, because influence is the new currency. Okay, so Definitely. and you gotta have a million followers. You know, I'm trying to get to a million followers. And of course, it hurt me when I lost my LinkedIn profile eight times. I had 127,000 connections, so I'm reinventing myself. And I've only been on TikTok for probably five weeks, four weeks. So if I can do that, you can do that. You're better looking, you're smarter than I am, and I'm sure, I'm sure you can do a lot better than than I'm doing. But we got to develop the uh, the strategy. We got to have followers, and you don't sound to be very shy. Hopefully, you're not. Um, but being part of your community is going to be something we need to focus on. So one of the things we start as we're building the business blueprint, mm -hmm. we need to build these truck wraps so they see you as a trusted part of your community. That is crucial. This is where everybody else fails. Okay. Because yeah. those, those, um, those truck wraps, you know, they're at rib festivals, you know, uh, jazz festivals, little league games, grocery stores, churches, mosques. I don't care where they're going to be seen everywhere. Okay. And if you take um, 1-800-GOT-JUNK as an example, I mean, they did it the hard way. They, they would pay their employees to stand on the highway overpass and wave traffic, right? There are better ways to get 400,000 eyeballs social right. media right mm -hmm. TikTok, you know uh facebook groups you know instagram and so on so you are going to be an expert in social media right okay because you need to teach everyone that works for you is related to you and everywhere you're going to go what kind of car you drive i have an audi a5 okay you just sold it mm -hmm. Okay, because I don't want you to drive an Audi A5. And by the way, that's a beautiful car. Uh, I have one of those that I take to the track. Um, but guess what? I sold it because I drive, you know, a Mercedes Sprinter van wrapped. Okay, 